Joe Pesci is one of the greatest actors of all time. Raging Bull, Goodfellas, Casino, My Cousin Vinny. This guy's been in so many hits you'd think he actually was in the mob. Joe Pesci proved to everybody that just because you're under 5 foot 9 doesn't mean you can't get respect, fear, and love. And let's not forget about his illustrious music career. Beat out my ass, treat all my bras like trash. You'll catch a blast if you move too fast. I talk to class, you don't have to ask. The one rapper Eminem was too afraid to diss. After making Casino, Joe probably thought to himself, I'm too successful, I've been in too many good movies, and it's time for me to cement my legacy as an actor by appearing in the most terrible movie I can think of. So after getting handed what I can only assume was a briefcase full of unmarked bills, Joe signed on to do a movie by the name of Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. If he doesn't get that by noon tomorrow, more heads are gonna roll, you know what I mean? Okay. This is Tommy Spinelli. My girlfriend's parents. Father, he doesn't like me, I know. No, I could understand that. I just may, and I don't like you either. His luggage. Oh, no, Tommy. You didn't lose nothing, did you? Is going on vacation. This loser. Where the hell are my heads? Don't worry about it, all right? He'll happen before he starts thinking. A lot of heads. Ah! You ain't there. Your buddy's here in history. You got it? Are gonna roll. Joe Pesci, David Spade, eight heads in a duffel bag. <laughs> If you've never heard of this movie, you're not alone. Barely anybody went to see it when it came out, and it was a huge flop commercially and critically. Plus, it had David Spade in it, so that makes it like 10 times worse. Pretty sure this movie is the reason Joe Pesci would go on to retire from acting two years later, but hey, hanging around David Spade too much will probably do that to you. Look, I'm just saying, there's probably a reason why his assistant tried to murder him. Anyways, enough hoo-ha, let's just get into the movie. But wait, before we get into the movie, don't forget to like and subscribe, or I will send Joe Pesci to your house. I'm two weeks late delivering the meat. If he doesn't get that by noon tomorrow, more heads are gonna roll, you know what I mean? So these two knuckleheads here killed eight of their boss's rivals and cut off their heads as proof of the deed. It's Joe Pesci's job to deliver the heads to the boss. So right off the bat, the premise of this movie makes absolutely no sense. Why couldn't they just take a photo of the bodies and give that to the boss? They had cameras back then. Also, why would they send Joe Pesci on this task? He's clearly a seasoned mob guy. He's in his 60s and they're sending him to do bitch work? I, I don't get it. You gotta miss those pre-9-11 days, man, where you could just walk onto a plane with a duffel bag full of body parts and no one would bat an eye. I'm sorry, we'll need to use this compartment. Uh, would you mind using another one? Now, this goes right under here. What is this small? Okay, no, that's okay. Thanks. Don't, don't. What, what, wait, wait, don't. Oh, Joe, what are you doing? You're acting like the bag of organs is Billy Bats or something. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. Motherfucker. Okay, but for real, I'm pretty sure they don't transport organs through fucking Delta Airlines. I'm going to meet my girlfriend's parents. Already the father, he doesn't like me, I know. I could understand that. I just may, and I don't like you either. I got to sleep. Didn't you hear me? Come on. I'm trying to make conversation. I'm not... Good. Make it in sign language. Now, this guy here is Charlie Pritchett, who is played by Andy Como, Comeo, whatever his shitty last name is. This is the main character of the story, believe it or not. You may not be able to tell that because he's on none of the promotional material. Joe Pesci is front and center on the movie poster. Even if you look at the Wikipedia page, he's sixth on the cast. But he's the main character. The whole plot revolves around him and he gets the most amount of screen time. Now, Andy, if you're watching this video, which let's be honest, you're definitely not, scroll away immediately because I'm about to bully you. The reason this film is so bad is largely due to Andy's performance. He's not a very good actor, and I'll cut him some slack because it was the beginning of his career. He was probably in his 20s. This was like his first big movie role, and he just uh, he just flops completely. I don't know if that's the fault of the director, but he has no on-screen charisma, and he's just boring. All, all the scenes with him are boring, which sucks because that's the majority of the scenes in this movie. If the movie centered around Joe Pesci only, then this would be a much, much better movie. It could have even gotten like a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes instead of a 10. But yeah, man, this guy, he really brings the movie down. I hate to say that because I hate shitting on people, but I'm sorry. Uh, it, was, it was just not a good performance. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the movie. Something wrong? No. You look great. You see what I'm saying? Ugh. 
I'm sorry, Andy. I really am. So Joe Pesci goes to grab his bag, but what's this? It's not his bag? He grabbed the wrong bag? Charlie Pritchett? Shit! I have a feeling shenanigans are about to ensue. So Charlie's going on a vacation with his girlfriend and her parents to Mexico, and while he's doing that, Joe Pesci has to try to track him down so he can get back his bag of heads. Now, how's he gonna do this, you may ask? Well, simple. He's gonna go to his university and torture his roommates until they say where he is. Bitch. Now look, this is not gonna get any easier. It's only gonna get harder. So, I don't know why you're protecting this kid, because I'm going to find him. Listen, man, I'm all for torturing David Spade. He deserves it for making Joe Dirt too. But why does Joe Pesci think these guys are trying to cover for Charlie? You took his bag, remember? This isn't some conspiracy. Also, it would be hilarious if this is actually how the mob did things. They just whip people with towels. Big Tony wants his money. You give Big Tony his money, and next time I'm bringing along a towel. So while Joe Pesci does to David Spade what I wish I could have done to him after watching Dickie Roberts, Charlie's girlfriend's mom gets a little peek inside his bag and sees, uh, you know, there's a little, a little head in there. And what does she do? Does she tell the other members of her family? Does she alert the authorities? No, she attacks Charlie with a fork. Would you like an enchilada? <laughs> Women, am I right? Luckily, no one believes the mom because she's a raging alcoholic, but then the girlfriend finds out about it. Oh, <laughs> Senora, are you all right? It's fine. Everything's fine. Are you sure, senorita? Oh, you, you, you're just gonna leave? I mean, there's like clearly something weird going on in this room, but uh, okay, all right, that's fine. Luckily, she finally comes to her senses and realizes that our boy Charlie could never commit such an unspeakable act. Could it be Steve or Ernie playing some sort of sick, hideous medical prank? Hey, bro, it's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. Call the police. No, no, no. We're in Mexico, Lori. A third world country, you don't just call the police in a third world country. Why not? Because they have no laws here. They'll turn me into a taco. Is this racist? It seems racist to me. Let me know in the comments. Just when you thought there couldn't possibly be any more shenanigans, the cleaning ladies take the duffel bag into the laundry room. How wacky is that? We clean the room. What? We don't clean. Oh no. Okay, well, he's definitely gonna get exposed now, right? Wrong. Because the laundry lady is blind? Wait, what? It's absolutely insane to me that somebody got paid to write this. Somebody got paid five years of my salary to write this baloney. Oh, so nobody noticed there was a head. Nobody noticed there was a head in the fucking washing machine? Are you serious? That's what you're trying to tell me right now. Okay, seriously, who wrote this movie? I, I gotta know. Tom Schulman. What? This is the same guy that wrote Dead Poet Society? Oh, man, nothing makes sense anymore. Anyways, I gotta send this guy a strongly worded email. Dear Thomas, you absolute schmuck. I saw that movie you did with Joe Pesci. That was the worst writing I've seen since I got that letter from my bitch ex-wife telling me I can't see my kids anymore. Sincerely yours, Dantavius. Felt good to get that off my chest. Anyways, let's get back to this stupid movie. Joe Pesci finally gets into contact with Charlie. Yeah. I, I lost one. You lost one? You lost one? How the hell could you lose one? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Joe. How the f do you lose a head? And also, uh, you just left it there? You just left it there with the fucking cleaning lady, you stupid schmuck? Oh my god, bro, this movie, like, the more I think about it, like, the stupider it gets, and it's making me angry. It's really making me angry, like, legitimately. I need to calm down, bro.
Just when I started to calm down, just when I was saying to myself, it can't get any stupider, the stupidest thing in the world happens. The girlfriend's father gets caught with two of the heads in his carry-on bag. Senor, no. No, senor. <laughs> Why does he have the heads in his carry-on bag? I don't know. They never show the heads being put in there. They never explain how they got there. They're just there because reasons. I, 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 I'm, I'm just, I need another gobble ghoul break, bro. So the dad gets caught with the heads and gets tossed into Mexican prison. Now this puts Joe Pesci in a predicament because the movie's called Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. And he's down three heads. So he has to get these three heads somehow. How's he gonna go about doing this? Well, simple. He's gonna go to the cryo lab at David Spade's university and just cut some heads off some cadavers. And what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you that right across campus is a gold mine of heads. Take the heads. No, no way you do it. This is, this is your crazy idea, okay? My idea that you should do it. So after Joe gets all his heads, he's headed down to Mexico to retrieve the rest of them from Charlie. But Charlie, being the absolute putz that he is, decides he's gonna go to the border and give the heads to the authorities to clear his girlfriend's dad's name. Joe Pesci didn't really like this, so he kidnaps the girlfriend's whole family, including the grandmother. Get your hands off me, you goon. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> okay, this is literally the funniest moment in the entire movie. I'm not gonna lie. Joe Pesci finally catches up to Charlie and he is not happy, let me tell you. Where's my heads? They're in the, they're in the Jeep, they're in the cooler. Good. I lost another one. What? <laughs> End of flashback. Now, Charlie's been a colossal screw up this entire film, but it's time for the Act 3 redemption, so he finally comes up with a plan that's not dog shit. He concocts a scheme to get those two bozos from the beginning of the movie arrested while Joe Pesci escapes with the heads. And it actually works because, I mean, what else did you expect? I have something to declare. Hey, 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 it's a mistake. He doesn't have any. The man you arrested yesterday is in jail for the murders these guys committed. Oh. Wait, 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 that's, that's not us. You arrested us for the wrong head here. Rico! After everything's said and done, Joe Pesci delivers all the heads to Big Seb and gets to retire on the beach and have a life of peace and prosperity. Yes, this psychopathic murderer who killed without a second thought gets to have a happy ending. You know what? That's how bad all the other characters in this film are that you're forcing me to sympathize with a killer with no conscience that just murders people without any consideration. So, uh, good job. So yeah, that was Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag, the movie that made Joe Pesci quit acting. I don't know if that's true, but that's my theory. Usually movies like this have the potential to be good, these like goofy off-brow comedies. And like I said earlier, if it was just centered around Joe Pesci and he was the central figure in the story, I think it would have been a lot better and I think it could have been a cult classic. But Andy, again, I'm sorry, if you've stuck around this long, you're a good sport, and I apologize again, but you sucked in this movie, man. Like, he, he, it was just so boring because of him. Even David Spade did better than the main character in the movie. That's all I have to say. As always, guys, thank you for watching my videos, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Later.